What's going on YouTube? It's Jason again with JJ Drones. And three years ago, DJI came out with its first of a kind FPV drone. And it was really a big flop. And then last year, they came out with the Avada. Now the Avada was probably one of the best FPV drones that DJI has ever created. And now we are gonna dive in to the Avada 2. Let's get in the video. Okay guys, so we did get the fly more kit with this, plus we got a couple extra items. We've got two 128 gigabyte memory cards. Now, this drone actually has, I believe 46 gigabytes of onboard data on the drone itself. So, I mean, if you're not gonna be doing a lot of flying, you can pretty much just depend on the uh, memory that's on the drone itself. But you just never know what you're gonna use, especially flying at 4K. We also have the DJI uh, Remote 3. Now, this goes with the uh, OcuSync 4. And we're gonna do a comparison between this remote and the other remote. And we're gonna do a comparison with the Avada 1 and the 2. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to rip into this because um, I've been waiting since I ordered this to get this thing open. So let's dive right in. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, right there it'll actually show you where you can do uh, scan the barcode or the QR code so that you can download the DJI Fly app. Now, I've already got the app on my phone, so that's not a big deal. But if this is your first time getting a drone like this, definitely go and scan this QR code and download the DJI Fly app. Now, if you use Android, you're going to have to do some special permissions for outside apps. And it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. Okay, guys, so first impressions. I mean, this is a nice carrying bag, okay? And this is what the drone is coming in now. And... I mean, it feels solid. It feels very high quality. Now this bag is going to go to the person that bought the Avada One, and I'm gonna keep the backpack. But still, I mean, these, the zipper is covered here so that no water can get into it. And you do have the pockets on the side. You've got the strap that you can put around your arm. I mean, and it does feel very, very high quality. Now inside the bag, this is like for your headband on the goggles. So if the goggles are, or if your uh, the eyepieces are close to your eyes, you can actually attach this to the headpiece and then that'll give you a little bit of a spacer. So we'll see if we need that. This is for if you wanna put prescription lenses into the drone or into the goggles and then you have your USB-C to okay this is an adapter for a USB-C cord and I'm assuming that will be for the goggles not sure yet I guess we'll find out right and then you have all of your instructions and safety information and stuff and DJI sends a bunch of stickers with it um, this is just your USB-C to USB-C cable, so we'll just leave that in there. And then we've got one, two, three, four extra propellers, so that's awesome, especially knowing me. And you've got your Allen wrench for those propellers. Now, I'm not seeing any screws here. Oh, that's because the screws come with in the propeller bag. Okay, so you do have the screws, you've got the Allen wrench, you've got the propellers, you've got all of your safety information in here. Let's start 
with the motion controller. Now some people have affectionately called this something other than a motion controller, but if you look at it, it is much smaller than the first generation. It feels a lot better in the hand. Um, I like where they have all the buttons uh, positioned. And this comes about uh, halfway charged, so this is going to have to be charged. But you have your record button here on the side. You have a scroller wheel right here. And then you've got your return to home and your mode button here. And then this is your joystick. And then I'm guessing this is your lock and lock button here. And then you have your power button right here. So just to give you um, a comparison, I have the older motion controller right here. Now, if you look at the size, I mean, there's really no comparison. This one here is about um, one and a half times the size of this one here. So, and this one is a lot lighter. So if you're flying for a long period of time with this, it's not gonna be as heavy as this one is. Not to say that this is heavy, but you know, if you're out flying for a long time and you've got your arm outstretched like you have to to fly your drone around, this one's gonna be a lot easier to handle for a longer period of time than this one. Now, we're gonna have to charge this, so we're gonna set this off to the side. Don't forget the wrist strap, guys, because if you are out flying and you just end up dropping your controller for some reason, I'm not saying that you will, but if it does happen, it does make it easier that you can keep it right there on your wrist. So I highly suggest putting this in here. So now that we've got that pushed through, put that through there, and voila. Now we have our wrist strap all ready to go. Okay guys, well don't mistake this for the Mini 4 Pro batteries, because this is not. This is the Avada 2 batteries, and it looks very similar to the Mini 4 Pro. Uh, as, as far as the, the case goes, you've got a button here that you can check and see what uh, kind of power the batteries have, but as of right now, it's not showing me anything. So I'm guessing that's because you have to actually get this thing charged up before it will do anything. And you've got two batteries right here, okay? Now, this is significantly different than the other, the Avada 1 batteries, because here is one of the Avada batteries. And with this battery, you had to actually put it into the Avada, and then you'd push this down into the uh, slot where that went. And it was kind of clumsy. And some people had problems with the battery popping out when it crashed. I never had that problem with it, but you know, it is a problem. So they fixed the design and now it just slides in and locks into place with the two taps on the side. So that is a fantastic upgrade to the batteries. So we're gonna have to get these charged up as well but we're going to get the last battery first before we plug that in. Now we can move on to the goggles. Now the goggles are supposed to be a huge upgrade from the previous generation. And I have the older goggles sitting out so that I can show you the difference. Now, if you look at here, guys, first thing that you notice is you have your two forward facing cameras right here so that you can actually have a picture in picture view so you can actually see your surroundings all at one time. So this is the same here guys. So you can adjust the lenses so that it fits where your eyes are in the goggles and you can actually adjust the focus on these. So we're gonna be able to adjust the focus so that we can see without our glasses in the goggles. Now this is much more lightweight. Um, you've got venting here on the front, you have venting here up top, you've got your antennas right here. And on this side, you have this rubber around the edges so that you don't have any light seeping in. 
And then you have this right here. This is that headband that I told you about that you can actually attach. So you can attach this piece and that will give you a little bit more space so that your eyes aren't touching the lenses in the goggles. And then this one doesn't have an external battery. This just comes with the battery attached to this. And the wires actually run from here through the strap into the goggles. So this is going to be really nice because with the Avada, with the goggles too, um, having all those wires hanging around is such a pain in the butt. Um, and then for to adjust your strap around your head, it actually says tight and loose here. So if you want to make them tighter, you just turn this. If you want to make them looser, you turn it this way. And then basically you just put it around your head and then tighten it down and you're ready to go. Um, that's a lot nicer than the older version as well. Let me grab that. Okay, so here is your older version goggles. And here are your newer version goggles right here. And as far as size comparison goes, I would say that the newer goggles are probably a little bit bigger as far as the, the footprint on the front, but that's because you have this part right here. Otherwise, it would be similar size. And then the venting is just a little bit different on here because on this one here, you've got the vents here and on top. And this one here, you have them there and on top as well, but not very much different. But here's the thing that was really a, the bane of my existence is all these cables. Okay, all these cables just you have to connect to your phone and everything else. This one has the touchpad. Now this one doesn't have a touchpad per se. This one has right here. You do have a place to tap on the side, but you also have an actual physical button here. So that is really nice to have that that physical button because the touchpad, it worked. It was just, it was a pain. And with the motion controller now, you can actually use the motion controller as kind of like a laser pointer. Um, so you can actually go through the menus that way. So that's going to make it really nice as well. But uh, these goggles are a huge improvement. Again, this is going to have to be something that we're going to have to charge. All of these things are going to have to be charged before we can any we can do anything. Now, if I were going to make one complaint to DJI, it would be that we don't have anything to cover the lenses on the goggles. So I guess when you're not flying it, I guess you could put that there to, to protect it. Now, I have actually seen other people try and use the old covering from the goggles too, and it doesn't fit. So DJI, please give us something that we can actually put over the lenses here. Um, it also has your USB or your uh, SD card slot right here. So that's very convenient as to where to put it. And then right here, there's a sensor that'll say whether or not the goggles are sitting on your face. So overall, very, very nice. The power button is right down here. And that one's got just about half charge on that. So I'm going to get these things charging and then we're going to pull out the Avada 2. Okay guys, and now the star of the show, the Avada 2. Wow. Wow, look at that. I mean, this is, I don't even know what to say. This just is a completely different animal than the one. Let me grab the one. Okay, so here we have the one and the two. And as you can see, this one here is a little bit bigger than the one. Yeah, it's definitely longer and it's definitely wider. So I'm guessing because it's longer and it's wider is the reason why it's more agile and why your the acrobatics are going to be a lot easier than they've had with this one in manual mode. This one is just kind of bulky and clunky. This one's more streamlined. Now, even the propellers are different. 
you've got the three propellers right here. And this one's got five propellers on each one. So this one is actually rated at 81 decibels. You got a sticker right there that says it. And this one here is a lot louder and I'll show you right here. My biggest complaint with this drone was the fact that the memory card slot is right here. And every time that you wanted to get your footage off the drone, you had to pull and open up this memory card slot. And as you can see with my sausage fingers, it's not the easiest thing in order to open that. And then you have to slide it off the side. Then you have to push down on the memory card, pull it out, and then when you're done, you have to basically put it back in the same way that you pulled it back out. Big pain in the rear end. I still think that's one of the ways that I actually cra had this crash um, and then have to get it fixed by DJI because of the fact that I might have bent one of the propellers just trying to get the memory card out. Now with this one, the memory card slot right here on the side there's a spot for a USB-C cable and there's a spot for a memory card. So all you have to do is put your memory card in here and you're good to go. Now your battery, instead of it, like I said before, your the Avada 1 battery would come in here and then would plug in here. And that was a problem, like I said, because when people would crash, the battery could pop out. This one here, it's just locked into place. There's There's no battery popping out of this one. Now this one has the gimbal cover just like the Avada 1 did, but this one seems to be locked into place a lot better. In fact, there we go. And then let's peel this off of that one over one and a third sensor. Now that is the same sensor that you'll find on one of the DJI Osmo cameras. So you're going to get really good quality video from that. Now we're going to get the stickers off of this drone. We don't want to have any stickers other than maybe it's registration sticker. Oh, this one here says, uh, do not touch the air intake to avoid burns. So this drone will get hot apparently. Now I have seen other drone reviews where, um, if you let this sit for too long in, uh, higher temperatures, it will overheat. So just be aware of that. This, orange piece here and this one here, this is actually rubber. So when it crashes into something, it's going to absorb some of the impact. Now you're not gonna to wanna to fly this head first into anything, but like I said, this will absorb some of that impact. Now, the one thing that I can say about these two drones is that both of them feel very sturdy. I mean, the, the Avada one, is a really good drone, especially if you're first getting into FPV and you just want to learn how to fly it. It's a great drone. This one here, I'm assuming is going to be exactly the same way. Again, like I said, we're going to have to register this with the FAA. So we're going to do that as soon as we're done doing this part of the review, because we have a lot of batteries that need to be charged before we can even fly this. Right? So we're going to put the gimbal cover back on. All right. So, this is the Avada 2. I'm excited to get this out and fly it. We've got to get all of the batteries charged and uh, we've got to register it with the FAA. Before we get into this, we're going to open up the remote controller 3 and we're going to compare it to the remote controller 2. Okay guys, so we've got this tab again. All you have to do is pull on this. And that's just basically a seal saying that nobody's been tampering with the box. Nobody over at UPS was playing with your your drone while you weren't there. Not to say that I would blame them though. All right, so it doesn't look like this even come. Does it come with a USB-C cord? Maybe it's in here. All right, so it comes with an Allen wrench and instructions. 
And then you got silica gel. I don't think this one even comes with a USB-C cord. All right, so here is the remote three. And we're not really gonna do much with it as of right now. Well, I guess there is a, a little bit of a difference. Okay, so this in my hand here is a remote three. This is the remote two. Now with the remote two, you actually have a physical antenna that you can pull up. So that was actually really nice. And then you had your, your roller here on the side and you had your start stop for your camera here. And then your mode buttons were here. Your return to home was here. And it was very, very solid. I mean, this is a, this is really, really solid. You can feel it in your hands, the, the weight of it, okay? This one here is a lot lighter, okay? You don't have the physical antenna, but you still do have the antenna here. And then you have all of the same buttons. You have your mode buttons here, start and stop, return to home, your roller button. Everything is very much the same. The only difference is your antenna is internal. Now with the Avada 2 and the goggles, you actually get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So with the Avada 2, you can actually Bluetooth your flights to a phone that has a DJI app without having to use cables which is another huge improvement for the Avada 2 or the Avada 1. Um, but this here just feels a lot lighter. So we'll have to see if it's as good as the original controller. Now, from what I've heard, the sticks are too small. We will see, especially for somebody that does pinching instead of thumbing like I do, all right, so we're gonna get this controller charged. Um, I've already got the batteries charging. I've got the goggles charging. I've got the motion controller charging. And then we're gonna get this charged because we're going to fly both the controllers um, when we take this on the test flight. And we're gonna have to do the test flight tomorrow because it is already nighttime. Um, but uh, let's get this all charged up and then we'll go through the setup process after I get done registering this drone with the FAA. So stay with me, guys. All right, guys, a little bit of important information here. Now, when you get this drone, there is an option for you to buy the drone by itself, okay? And I've actually talked to Ted from Off the Hook Outdoors, so thank you, Ted, for bringing up this question. Uh, he said that the way that he read it on the website is that you could actually just buy the drone itself and that you could actually use the goggles too and the uh, motion controller too with the Avada 2. Now, I actually did try and connect the Avada just to the, uh, or the, uh, the original goggles 2 and the motion controller 2 to the Avada 2 and when you try and do that it doesn't even pop up anything for the Avada 2 so it doesn't allow you to do it and then I went online and looked on the DJI website and you cannot and I didn't think you could because the Avada 2 actually or the Avada actually runs on OcuSync 3 where the Avada 2 runs on OcuSync 4. So you're running on two different types of software. It would just be like you're trying to run uh, Windows software on an Apple laptop. The two don't compute with each other. So if you're gonna buy the Avada 2, you're gonna have to buy at least the goggles and the motion controller. You don't have to buy this controller. This controller is completely optional and it's only for people that want to do manual flight. And eventually I do want to use this for manual flight, but it's an important piece of information. I thank Ted for calling and asking me that question because I didn't even think of that. I just figured, hey, I've got the stuff here. I might as well try it out and see if it works. And it didn't. So just a handy little piece of information for you guys. Okay guys, so we got the, uh, the battery charged completely, at least one of them. 
We've got the motion controller completely charged up. And we have the goggles pretty much charged up. I hope it's enough to at least get through some of this setup because we have to get moving on this. So we're gonna press and press and hold on the goggles to turn these on. And then we're gonna press, press and hold on the drone. And then we're gonna press, press and hold on the controller. And then for the initial setup, we actually do have to plug into the goggles and get on the DJI Fly app. And I need to move this out of the way. All right, so it says activate DJI device. We're gonna agree. And now it is activating. Activation successful. Hit done. We're gonna activate our DJI Care Refresh. Okay, and now we have all these updates. And this is why I wanted to get this all started. So we're going to get these updates done and then we'll be right back. Okay, guys. So we've gone through the entire update process. The update has been installed successfully. So we're going to go ahead and get out of this. And now we're at the home screen for the Avada 2. And we can just hit go fly. We made it through all of the tutorial stuff. So here's easy acro. When aircraft is in flights. Let's see here. Toggle joystick to perform easy acro. Okay, that tells you how to do that. So now if we were flying, we'd be able to use slide, drift, or flip. Now this right here, you can share your live view to a mobile device via Wi-Fi. So any mobile device that has the DJI Fly app, you can actually share that via Wi-Fi. So that's really cool. Um, head tracking. Now, I'm not really sure if I'm going to use this much, but we may try that tomorrow when we're flying. Uh, the enhanced display. I don't know if I really need that. Um, that's for recording. Uh, Google's defog. That is really cool because if your goggles get fogged up, you may want to use that. Um, so let's get out of that menu and let's go over here to this menu. Let's see your status. Let's go to settings. Let's go to display. Enable real view picture in picture. Gimbal calibration units, here we go. We want an imperial. Now, if you if your drone gets turned over upside down, that's what turtle mode is for. Um, we're going to turn off beginner mode. We don't need beginner mode. We don't need the Google's t uh, the goggles tutorial. We've already done that. Let's go back to status again. Camera aspect ratio sixteen by nine. Video quality. We want that. Let's do 2.7K at 120 frames per second. That way we can ch change it, or we can do uh, slow motion with that if we want. Um, rock steady. And then let's see here. Grid lines off, center point, storage. Okay, so we've got the SD card in there and it is going to the storage. So now we have the goggles dialed in and we have all the settings set up. The drone is ready to fly. The only thing that we haven't done is try and connect the regular controller. Or right, let's turn off this controller. So we're turning off the motion controller. Let's go to connection guide on the phone. Do a DJI FPV remote controller three, and it says plus remote control power, and press and hold it again to power on remote control. So now we can actually fly this <laughs> FPV three controller. Okay, so I can up move the gimbal up and down, as you can see on the screen there. So that's pretty cool, guys. Now, if you look in the lower 
bottom of the screen, we still have 15 satellites and we're in the house. Um, we've got 80% uh, battery life on the goggles. We have 90% battery life on the drone. We don't have anything on the screen that says how much battery life the controller has. So that would be something that would be nice if DJI could actually include in a firmware update. So now my question is, if I want to change this controller, okay, let's say I want to use the motion controller now, we're done using this controller. And now I want to use the motion controller. Is this going to connect automatically? Let's see. Okay, so the motion controller connected right away. So that's really nice. Now with the motion controller, can we move the gimbal up and down? Yes, we can. Now, it's not as good as, let's say, the FPV controller. because it goes at like five or eight degrees at a time. <laughs> so that's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so now let's say we're done using the motion controller and we want to switch back to the FPV manual controller. So turn that off. Okay. And then this one, we're going to turn back on. Okay, and then this one is connected, I would think. Yes. Okay, so this is a lot easier to transfer between the two controllers than the Avada one. Now let's just disconnect the phone completely. Okay because we shouldn't need the phone anymore. And we don't because if we go to the menu settings and go status, it says remote ID functioning normally. So you don't have to have the phone connected anymore, guys. The phone is just gonna be there for doing updates and stuff like that. So um, that's going to be really, really nice. No more cables. So this cable right here isn't gonna be there when we're flying tomorrow. There is one more update that I need to do, but uh, I can do that on my own. It's just a fly, fly safe database update. Okay guys, so we have the drone unpacked. We have everything updated. We have everything connected. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna go out and we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison between the Avada 1 and the Avada 2. But in all reality, we're gonna fly the Avada 2 like it's going out of style, so. Stay with me. We'll see you in the morning. A little crazy for you now. A little crazy for you now, baby. I'm a little, a little, a little. A little crazy for you now.